So I, I don't think one can say that these countries are uh, down here simply because of a, uh, something about the Nordic countries. But also, even if you chopped off Finland, Norway, Sweden, Japan, that end, and you chopped off the USA and Portugal, that end, or the UK as well, you'd still have a significant relationship in between. And I think actually it's very hard to think of any other explanation um, for that sort of lineup. The second reason I wanted to come back to this graph is just to point out what you, I'm sure, realized as we went through them, that uh, it's usually the same countries that do badly each time and the same countries that do well. I, mean, I, I imagine you noticed that UK, USA, Portugal have high prison populations, high obesity, our health isn't uh, very good. In fact, the USA, I think, is, comes about number 28 or 30 in the international league table of life expectancy. On almost all those variables, they polarize in, in a fairly similar way. And again, at the good end, it's always the same countries that do well. So what we're talking about is a sort of general social dysfunction that's related to inequality. Um, it's not just one or two things. If you know about a country's health, you can make a good guess at its uh, imprisonment rates and how well its good children do in the international maths and literacy scores and how much violence it has, how many people um, use different drugs. So we have to think, stop thinking about individual social problems and the thinking just about the causes of teenage births or the causes of violence. What we're talking about is a much more fundamental social process related to, to inequality. I want now to move on to uh, first just to point out that this is not something that just affects the poor in each society, it affects all of us. Um, but then to move on uh, to try and explain why we are apparently so sensitive to inequality. Um, from the scale of the differences that Kate was showing you, um, for instance in mental health or in the rates of violence or any of these other problems, they were nearly all huge differences. And you can't explain such large differences just in terms of what's happening to the bottom 10 or 20 percent, the poorest bit of the population. And take, for instance, the four and a half or five year differences in life expectancy between uh, the USA and Japan, if that was all due to the, what was happening to the bottom 10%, the bottom 10% in Japan would have to live 45 or 50 years longer than the bottom 10% in the USA. And of course that isn't what's happening. And you get these very large differences in all the outcomes we've shown you because they're affecting most of the population. And in a way you can deduce that just from uh, the size of the differences. But there is also other very strong evidence of what's going on. This graph uh, shows infant mortality rates um, and it compares infant mortality in England and Wales with Sweden. Uh, uh, some Swedish researchers, this is quite a long time ago, um, classified a number of uh, the deaths, a large number of deaths, according to the British uh, Registrar General's occupational class classification. Here's class one, the people at the top, uh, going down to the non-manual occupations, down to the skilled manual, semi-skilled and unskilled manual. And you can see that infant mortality rates in England and Wales have quite a steep social gradient. And these red bars um, are Sweden with uh, a pretty erratic social gradient. I mean, they have differences. And, uh, um, but you can see it's nothing like our gradient. I might point out that you might, if you were to try and draw a line through the tops of these uh, blue columns, you'd get a, a line that sort of angle, and with the red ones, um, something much flatter. Um, but you'd get, what you see is that the differences in infant mortality are much bigger at the bottom between the two countries than at the top. But even at the top, Sweden seems to do better. So if Sweden is healthier than England and Wales, partly because they're a more equal society, although it makes the biggest difference at the bottom, it still seems to make some difference to the top. 
the top social class seems to benefit as well. Um, you can look at adult mortality. There was another paper uh, going through the, the same sort of comparison um, with the same uh, findings. This is literacy scores um, for young people, 16 to 25 year olds, um, assessed for literacy levels. You know, there are these uh, international literacy and maths tests in different, uh, so you can compare how well people do in different countries. Their scores are classified by how many years of education their parents have had. So uh, down here, um, are well-educated parents. These are the scores of the kids of well-educated parents at the top of society. And down here, um, the scores of kids of badly educated parents at the bottom of society. And again, you see, the fact that Sweden is more equal than Canada, and Canada more equal than the United States, makes the biggest difference to the scores at the bottom of the society, um, but even at the top. You do a little bit better, even if you're at the top of society, you do a little bit better if you're in a more equal society. And if you think of where most of us are, somewhere in the middle, it still it makes quite an appreciable difference. So it's not simply that more unequal societies have more poor people. This is not actually telling you whether most of the population are up here or most of them are down there. What it's telling you um, is that wherever you are, you do less well in the more unequal society. Exactly like the graph I showed you comparing England and Wales with Sweden. We also looked at um, data for uh, the American states. What we did was simply uh, look at data for the th something like 3,100 counties in the USA. And we compared the um, county median income, how rich the county is on average, um, and its death rates. So county incomes and county death rates. But we divided the counties between whether they were in the more 25 more equal states or the 25 less equal states. And the relationship between county median income and county death rates um, in the less equal states is this top red line, and in the more equal states in this lower um, line. And what that tells you quite simply is that, again, wherever you are in the income scale, uh, your death rates are lower um, if you're in a more equal state than not. But again, the same pattern, the differences are bigger, lower down in society, the differences in death rates there are bigger than they are at the top of society, but even at the top of society, uh, people seem to do better. And there are now a number of other pieces of research that seem to uh, have the same implications. Okay, now I want to say a little bit about uh, why we're apparently so affected by inequality. I and mean, it, it, it seems surprising because you might go from one country to another um, feeling that you haven't got a clue whether one society is more equal than another. Though I think actually people do occasionally make remarks that suggest uh, that they do feel that there's something different about one society than another which fits in with this data. Um, I said at the beginning that um, where this research started was trying to understand social class differences in death rates, the big differences in life expectancy between rich and poor. Um, and one of the big changes in our understanding of health over the last probably 20 years has been that it's not simply that your circumstances affect your health directly, whatever you think, feel and think about them, but that a lot of the causation goes through what you think and feel. So it's not simply that you're in, in uh, bad housing and um, uh, have poor diets and so on. It's the anxiety, the depression, the stress uh, that goes with uh, feeling that you're at the bottom of the pile or, or whatever. 